What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, Earthmaster here checking in on this Monday work week, start of the work week for some. Uh, May 10th, 2021, about 1.22 p.m. West Coast time. And the latest quake out here is going to be a 2.6, striking out here along the North American plate. Looks like right around the uh, Idaho area for that 2.6. Kind of seeing a little increase in activity uh, in this region of the world after uh, quite the uptick in earthquake activity along the uh, uh, northwestern Pacific and also through the Indonesia area and down here along the uh, Kermadec Trench area seeing quite the increase in earthquake activity. Deeper movement being reported up there along the uh, Japan area and uh, expect that to continue if not intensify a little bit uh, as we see hopefully finally a little release in uh, lots and lots of uh, resistance and strain up here along this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now, now at the moment, nothing big going on, but we are seeing uh, uh, quite the increase there in the multitudes of quake, uh, the uh, quakes kicking up, including some further deep movement uh, for that 4.6, 205 kilometers just off the coast there, or uh, I mean just inland, I was gonna say off the coast, but just off of this subduction zone here, the trench area inland, uh, into parts of Russia and this other quake uh, going to be a 4.7 a little bit further backed up towards the area of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench Kamchatka Trench there we go I don't want to be making a, a new name for it because that's that's not the name um, so yeah kind of uh, looking at some interesting movement here these two deep earthquakes are what's kind of concerning to me uh, this one here 4.2 inland well inland folks into the subduction zone here uh 344 kilometers down that's a that's a super deep earthquake for that area not a big earthquake but uh definitely deep and that one and this other one up here to the north put together just shows the amount of uh of uh significant movement in this region i and I, as i said i expect this to uh, uh pop off uh, for a while with these fours and fives or it's possible we could see uh, a more significant quake there up above the 7 magnitude, a 6.8 uh, a few days ago, week, couple weeks ago, a week ago, whenever it was, uh, did not significantly relieve pressure uh, in accordance with the uh, uh, all the movement we've seen over the past month or so uh, around this region, outside of that area of Japan. Uh, so it's possibly playing catch up today. We'll see uh, how that goes. Philippines area, 5.1. Some deeper movement down there as well about 90 kilometers below surface and as we look towards the south here along the Kermadec Tonga trench area some more uh, movement up there and also uh, well that's a 5.0 not super deep there 35 kilometers and another 5.3 a little bit shallower along this Kermadec trench area at uh, 10 kilometers below surface uh, South America region up and down here i've seen uh still some uh, deeper movement up here around the peru area 4.7 at 43 kilometers and looking down south here is that deeper earthquake 4.5 uh, near argentina and a couple earthquakes up here near the peru uh, peru area at a fairly shallow depth there about 10 kilometers uh, below the surface uh, so North American plate up here, we'll go ahead and check this out. Um, we'll run with the all magnitudes so we can see a little bit better uh, detail what's going on. That earthquake that just struck on the globe is in, uh, what is it, 2.6 up here in Idaho, as I mentioned, outside of this region where we've been watching for quite a while uh, along the Sawtooth Fault system. Of course, this may get updated. Uh, if not, it's kind of a deeper earthquake for this region, 2.6. Looks like it has been reviewed, so that means it's been reviewed by seismologists, so it should stay. It should stick, uh, meaning location-wise depth and the magnitude. So kind of have to watch this pretty closely. Uh, just some deeper movement there in that region and outside of the area where we've seen uh, quite a quite a bit of multitudes of quakes there over the past few months. Uh, Washington area getting in some on the action as well, kind of there around the central area, I guess, uh, east of the Cascades. I'm not for sure exactly where that's uh, actually I think I've been through there a couple times I believe up around this region but uh, just a 1.5 pretty shallow as well uh, 3.2 kilometers 
and some deeper movement up here north of Mount Rainier with a 1.1 at 15 kilometers. Um, and some uh, further activity in the Southern Cal, Northern Cal. Little, I think this quake right here was, uh, I think I mentioned that last night. I believe that was still on the, uh, uh, what I got, 1851 UTC time. 1851. Oh, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe not. I don't believe that earthquake was there. It's just a couple hours ago, it looks like. Okay, so yeah, a little bit further deeper uh, movement there into the, uh, it's kind of weird. This one's at 23 kilometers. So down a stream, down, down below the Gorda uh, escarpment region, but just to the west of where the, the uh, Juan de Fuca plate subducts. Right there, that's, that's kind of odd for that location, just back there. I, I would ex expect to see it inland a little bit here. But uh, it's kind of a deeper movement and back behind this, uh, the subduction point. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that area. Uh, 23 kilometers. I believe it's been reviewed, right? Yes, reviewed. Alrighty, uh, what else we got here? Moving on down south into Northern California, a little bit further movement along the coastal ranges of California there, including uh, parts near, uh, looks like San Leandro, south of Concord area, along the Calaveras, uh, well, what do we got? The Calaveras Fault Zone, the uh, Northern Calaveras section there. A little movement off the coast of San Francisco as well, just to the west of the San Andreas Fault. That's going to be this darker red line that runs... Uh, Pretty close to the San Francisco area, right? Smack dab through uh, uh, through parts of it. Pacific on the west, Daly City on the east. Uh, down here along the creeping section, not a whole lot of movement, just a couple small microquakes, and uh, things look pretty quiet around the Ridge or the uh, Mammon Lakes area. A little bit of uh, microquake activity, but nothing really too bad going on there. And some uh, a handful of quakes there around the Ridgecrest area. Some movement along the Garlock Fault section as well. I'll have to keep an eye on this. Don't want to see that thing go because that uh, could trigger, no doubt, one or the other. Uh, if this thing decides to go to San Andreas Fault, the southern section decides to go with a bang. It could unlock and no doubt uh, create a, a pretty significant earthquake in this area as well. It's, we've seen a tremendous amount of built up of strain over the years along the Garlock Fault. So the same goes for if the Garlock Fault sees a significant quake, it could no doubt uh, trigger the big one along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, other than that, folks, Texas getting in on the thunderstorm activity down around the Del Rio area today again. Um, but far as uh, far as earthquake activity, just a little bit around the Pecos, Texas region couple small uh, quakes there. Looks like 2.6 being the largest in that little handful of activity. Uh, Yellowstone National, well, let's see. I want to check out Puerto Rico here real quick. Kind of leave those guys out. It's just haven't, it hasn't really been super active in the Puerto Rico area lately. Uh, a little 3.8 well to the west of Puerto Rico, south of the, the uh, Dominican Republic area along the uh, uh, Mariotas. I think that's right. I should know Spanish. I, actually, I, I do know uh, quite a bit. But uh, pronouncing it, see, yeah. Looks like Mar Mariotos uh, Trough in that region. As long as we keep activity out of the Puerto Rico Trench area, I think we'll be good um, for now. Uh, what else we got here? Yellowstone National Park is checking this last night. Not a whole lot of movement, folks. Just a couple small microquakes popping off here. You can see that around Norris Junction, Purple Mountain area. Uh, but other than that, uh, just some interference over here to the east. Not anything plate regard or uh, plate tectonic regarded or volcanic related. Um, actually, it looks pretty. Uh, looks like quite a bit of inter interference there. Uh, volcanoes covering Mauna Loa real quick. This thing is still at a yellow advisory. That's the big, big volcano there. That takes up uh, uh, the Big Island. Still looking at, uh, as I mentioned, yellow status, uh, threat potential very high. Looks like uh, 
not a whole lot going on at the moment. We haven't seen an increase in activity there as far as earthquake activity recently. But, uh, you know, things could always change. Go ahead and check out the recent earthquake activity in the Big Island real quick. See the southeast flank kind of kicking up today with uh, quite a bit of um, earthquake activity down here. South of uh, uh, the Mono Loa caldera area and also Kilauea volcano over here. Seen a little bit of further movement uh, right there at the crater. Just kind of a, a little uptick right there on the southeast flank. Uh, but for now, Mauna Loa looks, uh, looks okay. <laughs> still just kind of monitoring it. The Kilauea volcano still continues to erupt. Still uh, uh, filling up the, uh, oh, that crater over there. Still under an orange watch. Uh, Let's see, latest information, Kilauea Summit eruption continues on the island of Hawaii. Uh, this name right here, I'm gonna, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> For now, you guys can uh, read it at will. Uh, West Vent erupts lava into the lava lake, which was 228 M, 748 feet deep this morning. Whoa. Uh, May 7th, gas emissions and seismic activity at the summit remain elevated. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so we're still looking at uh, uh, influx of uh, lava into the lava lake. It's pretty cool. I'd like to get over there and check it out, but uh, got some things kind of holding me back at the moment. But um, watching this volcano, uh, Kilauea, or yeah, Kilauea area, and also the Mauna Loa region. If Mauna Loa starts really ramping up. Uh, I'm gonna be jumping on a plane heading out there uh, because that's kind of like a. Uh, once in a lifetime event there. Uh, if you look at this here, here's a little uh, article put out by the USGS folks. Um, although Mauna Loa is Earth's largest active volcano, it has lived in the shadow of Kilauea since it, is, uh, since it last erupted back in 1984. Uh, the geologic record shows that Mauna Loa erupts every seven years on average. However, 37 years have passed since lava flows from the volcano's northeast rift zone came within uh, about seven uh, four miles of uh, Hilo, Hawaii. Uh, here it talks about in the past six months there has been an uptick in earthquake activity on Mauna Loa's west flank. And we watched that and covered that quite a bit on the, uh, um, on the update videos. Uh, and changes in the pattern of deformation at its summit. These changes are small, sometimes barely above the noise, the noise level, meaning uh, like background average activity but may be telling us that magma system is evolving in important ways. Technology has changed a lot in the last 37 years since uh, Mauna Loa's last eruption. That's a long time to go considering average uh, eruptions there are seven years or so. That's pretty crazy. Uh, let's see, 30 eruption, the smallest, maybe most meaningful. Beginning on March 23rd, a tilt meter near Mauna Loa's summit recorded a change in tilt of about five, oh uh, man, micro radians, what are those? Interesting there. I oh, know, okay. It is not unusual to see this much tilt at Kilauea, but there has never been a tilt signal that could be attributed to changes in Mauna Loa's volcanic system. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's a lot of information here, folks. I'm not going to read all through that, but uh, definitely a uh, a lot going on there on the Big Island. A lot of changes and whatnot uh, taking place out there for sure. Um, so yeah, just. Uh, you know, it's an overall pretty active day seismically around the globe. Uh, I think uh, definitely something to watch. Uh, the Japan area specifically. Hold on one second here. Uh, I did want to send out a quick shout out folks and uh, I was going to do this last night to the folks that are 
major supporters here on the channel uh, when it comes to giving, uh, whether it's super chat, super stickers, or viewer applause. Um, all the donations here on this channel have always gone back into the channel uh, and that will continue as expected. Uh, I'm not gonna buy no brand new shoes or a brand new cabinet for or kitchen floor, you know, or uh, I'm, I'm good with the little stuff. I'm good with just how my floor is. I'm good with my shoes. I'm good with my cabinets. I don't need nothing new. So anything that does get uh, contributed to this channel goes right back into it, folks. And that's going to play a big part into the uh, 50,000 subscriber giveaway pretty soon. Um, Kathleen Westbrook, a big supporter of this channel. Thank you so much for all your donations uh, in recent times and in the past. Uh, also Remnant Warrior, a super big supporter. Um, Elizabeth Brower, uh, emphasize a really uh, generous uh, donator right there uh, Missy Mimi's of course she's uh, part of this channel and she regular uh, does donations as well Freebird I appreciate uh, your donations as well um, yeah I just uh, going through some of these names here and uh, there's just so much you know so much appreciation from you guys uh, that it's it's, uh, it's somewhat overwhelming. <laughs> Definitely, uh, this channel has grown a lot, and I'm happy to see it grow a lot. And I, I got some big plans here in the future, much much bigger plans um, that can help this channel um, take off like crazy. Uh, also, Ger George Curdy, I appreciate your donations. Um, Christy L, NGC six five four three. Uh, looks like Darling Nikki. Just going back uh, here a little bit, reading some uh, reading some names. Seven Pearls. Um, Pete Sherman. I appreciate uh, appreciate all your guys' help. And um, like I say, all this stuff goes right back into. Uh, the channel and that's uh, that's where it goes that's that's where it needs to go anyway guys um, have a good day it's hot it's just overwhelmingly hot here in California again um, mid 90s I think tomorrow is gonna be our first hundred degree day and it looks like we got a couple days of that before a slight cool down into the upper 80s whoop de doo right <laughs> anyway guys have a good day um, I'm gonna try to uh, do a little bit more uh, viewer appreciation stuff in the future uh, but for now first thing on the list is that 50,000 subscriber giveaway which is coming up uh, pretty soon super soon uh, I was just looking at some of these uh, some of the comments here hold on a second here Let me see what we're at. If I can get my, uh, I can get my phone to function here. Okay, we're at 48.5, 48,506. That's pretty close. So we only need roughly 1,500, 1,500 more subscribers, and we're at 50,000 already. That's kind of scary. Cause I gotta get, I gotta get on the ball with this. <laughs> I'm slacking. I need to get everything ready and uh, get an update video prepared for when we do hit the uh, 50,000 subscriber mark. All right, guys. Um, have a good day. Just kind of monitoring some stuff out there um, and watching areas super closely today. With that deep movement up here in the north uh, and the multitude of quakes taking place here, that's kind of a uh, impending sign of something big brewing in this area that I've been watching for quite some time. So just be prepared. Um, if we do get a, a major quake out there, no doubt, uh, I'll jump on and uh, get an update out. So just be safe. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.